Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Ford Focus. But these of cars before their restyling of 2008 are not too afraid of corrosion, but even in absolutely undamaged bodies, mushrooms at the seams of the sails and under the plastic of the bumpers eventually crawl out. But the bottom and side members hold up well, and if the drainage holes of the body are in order, then there will be no serious problems. Under all these cars, the corrosion of the arches and bottom of the doors are already safely crawled out of the seams and became visible. This greatly spoiled the appearance and lowers the price, but so far it is not at all dangerous. The check shows that the power structure of the body is in order. However, frankly, rotten copies are found, and most often these are cars with the most covered residence permit. A cocktail on local roads is clearly contraindicated for paintwork. And often traces of flooding in the cabin indicate the city water barriers were forced on these cars. Apparently, the internal cavities of the body do not have good anti corrosion protection. Cars after restyling in 2008, oddly enough, have more troubles with the paintwork. Most likely, the fault is the change in the technical process of painting, maybe the transition to water soluble paints in production. But the fact remains that bulges and chips on the paintwork of more recent cars appeared faster, and the paintwork layer is very thin and soft. It is literally stretched with grass blades. Cars painted with metallic in this case have a slight advantage. Advantage. The paintwork layer is clearly thicker, but the protection of the internal cavities was improved. It is possible that the joint sealant began to be applied better. Corrosion of the seams is still rare on these ma machines. The relatively simple and well thought out design of the electric system doesn't cause much trouble for car owners. Massive pillars of wiring and blocks are the lot of floated cars. True, the tiniest of most control units is simply zero here, any problems with drainage or unsuccessful dry cleaning. And now the car begins to suffer from bouquet of failures. And the wiring of the engine compartment is not particularly reliable. Most of the connectors do not withstand disconnections on old cars and brake. The wiring of the front and rear lights is also rather weak. Lamp holders often require replacement or repair. And the front wiring of the fog lamps. The harness burns for those who like to drive with fog lamps all the time. But let's be honest, the European hardly expected that it would seem to someone in our country that there is always fog in Russian roads. This lightning in general is intended to be switched on strictly in emergency situations and not as a way of additional illumination and dazzle outcoming cars in the rain. Even on all machines with motors 1.4 and 1.6, a generator is in the rest zone. The native unit serves from 3 to 5 years, after which it begins to get various breakdowns. Either a relay regulator, then a rectifier, then rings and bearings. In general, its resource is small, but it is convenient to change it. Everything is in the most conspicuous place. On engines 1.8 and 2.0, the generator is removed out of sight and doesn't cause trouble. But on them, there is an EGUR, a hydraulic booster with an electric pump drive. On other cars, the wiring to the drive is very vulnerable. Here, larger currents and the slice problems with contacts cause burnout of all poorly connected connectors. If your wiring is already damaged, there are no clips on the connectors, I recommend buying new chips and installing them. A fire in the engine compartment is an extremely unpleasant thing, you know. There is McPherson in front and quite solid. The suspension resource usually raises no objections. The mileage of most elements is under 100,000. With runs over 60-70,000, the first ones usually require replacement of the rear silent blocks of the L-shaped level and sometimes support bearings. The struts and bushings of stabilizers live half as much, but they are cheap and are consumables. One of road trip and now they are ready for replacement. Also wheel bearings here are by no means an example of reliability. They are afraid of moisture and side impact. For those who like to force puddles up to the hub depths and drive sideways, the hubs become a consumable item. In other ideal conditions, the resource is even less than that of the suspensions. The first sign of fatigue are shown by the node. It runs of 70,000 to and by 100 to 150 it is usually already making a lot of noise. The rear multi-link is quite sturdy and even the components are not too expensive. The silent blocks of the wishbone are traditionally the first to wear out. This happens with runs of 80 or 50, 70,000 kilometers. If you change the lever and the rest of the components can live as long. This is of course if you take care of suspension. Overloading, driving on dirt roads and side impacts reduce the insurance significantly. For those who like to save money, there is good news. You can change not the entire levers, but separately silent blocks and hinges. There are components from a self-platform Mazda 3 and simply non-original. If the cost of the work is not high, then the savings are significant. The brakes are simple and inexpensive. On the simplest cars without ABS, you can even find drums in the back, but fortunately most cars were equipped with anti-roll braking systems and disc brakes in a circle. On the simplest cars without ABS, you could find even 
drums in the back, but fortunately most cars were equipped with anti-lock, braking systems and disc brakes in a circle. And the restyled cars also with the ECP system. The resource of old notes is decent, the system doesn't cause any special problems. But on the cars of the first releases, problems with corrosion of brake pipes are already beginning. Here you need to be careful and replace the lights in time. The steering was also not noted among the problematic units. Relatively often power steering lines leak on machines with 1.4, 1.6 motors, high pressure pipes burst, and on machines with 1.8 and 2.0 motors, the resource of the EGUR pump is limited and there are problems with wiring. But on most cars, these nodes still do not cause trouble, and the steering rack is reliable and not prone to leaks when play the knocks appear. Cars on the RS and ST series have significant changes both in terms of brakes and suspension. An interesting version of the McPherson strut is used on RS, with pivot, which allows, while maintaining the, advantage, the advantages of this type of suspension, to provide powerful cars with excellent cornering behavior on the direction and realize their 305 horsepower on the track. The brakes are reinforced, there are multi-piston Brembo plus compound discs, all from the Volvo set of components. Cars with manual transmission and gasoline engines can be safely considered almost problem-free. That 1.6, that 2.0, that 2.5 do not have any serious problems with transmissions. With 1.8, on which there is a weak manual transmission from 1.6 engines, it happens that it fails. Moreover, replacement with the box from 2.0 is possible, but the car loses a lot in dynamics. There are two series of automatic boxes. With the engines 1.6 and 2.0, appropriate Mazda 4 F27e FN 4 ael automatic transmission was installed. In addition to simplicity and a good resource, it has a unique ability to completely disassemble the automatic transmission without removing it from the car. This is not to say that it doesn't break, the mechanical part of the box is rather weak, the oil pump doesn't lack dirt, oil, etc. But with the Ford settings, this box works and works, approximately up to a mileage of 180 to 150,000 km when it requires serious provisions. The old box requires its own, not the classic Dextron, but of the Macron 5 type. The blocking of the gas turbine engine is actively used, so if the oil change is on that way and during active movement, it should be done more often than according to the regulations, and those who like to burn at high speed will be first to refuse the package overdrive and reverse. But even in clay drives, the back cover is the first to fail, its material is too soft and again there is a loss of pressure in the overdrive and reverse packages. The wheel body is very reliable, except that the line pressure solenoid requires replacement during a major overhaul of the box. And the differential, on the contrary, is too gentle, doesn't lack slipping. With 2.0 engines, a more modern Jetco 5-speed automatic transmission JF507E was sometimes installed. It is rare, mainly on European models after the 2008 restyling. But the motors here are all the same as on the Mondial and Fusion. And these motors are very good. Small sized 1.4 and 1.6, with a timing belt drive, are compact, have a good resource and are easy to maintain. The Zetec SE series is generally one of the most successful series of motors to this day. Weak points, not a very good thermostat, not the most convenient air filter and an early dirty throttle well. If you change the timing belt at least once every 60-90,000 km, then the motor can travel 300 and 500,000 km, especially if you update the oil every 10,000 km and avoid dusty roads. Poor filtration reduces the resource of the cylinder piston group. Also, the catalyst here often doesn't leave up to 200,000 km and the engine is sensitive to gasoline. As a rule, when changing gas stations, the check engine light comes on. These are the features of the engine control system, changing the calorific failure of the fuel usually leads to a lambda error. By the way, Ford often does this trick when traveling to Europe, where gasoline always contains an admixture of ethanol. You shouldn't be afraid of a mistake, 1.6 per 115 horsepower engine, has adjustable timing and a full set of problems in this part. Face shifters begin to knock at insufficient and excessive oil pressure, the valves get dirty, the oil pressure of these motors is slightly lower and problems with the crankshaft liners appear earlier, especially with low viscosity oils. Such a motor is recommended to have regular maintenance by officials, constant listening and oils with a viscosity of no less than SAE40. And at the same time it cannot be said that the engines pulls much better than the usual 1.6 with 101 horsepower. The extra 14 horses are clearly lost somewhere but the maintenance cost and the number of possible jumps are increasing. Engines 1.8 and 2.0 are also old acquaintances. This is the Mazda L series, the same as on the Mondial. Reliable, resourceful, with a good timing chain, really almost eternal for the owner, usually more than 200,000 km. The motors are keyless, sensitive to the quality of work and the use of torque ranges during assembly. They do not have marks and are extremely difficult to repair in the field. The motors also have a lot of work with connections in the inlet, 
not very successful crankcase ventilation, sensors and all seals are leaking. And the intake manifold can also fail. The flaps in it wear out over time and can even fall under the valves or into the cylinder with predictable consequences. But at the same time, a good resource of the Piston Group, a well thought out design and even perfectly tolerate work on low viscosity as AE20 oil and long drain intervals. However, motors still prefer as AE40 oils and reasonable oil change times every 10-15 thousand kilometers. Engine 1.8 also distinguished itself here. The firmware for it turned out to be noticeably worse than for 2.0. The floating revolutions and even traction on stock firmware make it less perfect choice. Make it a less preferred choice. And remember about the manual transmission on it. As a result, the car with it is not much faster than with the much simpler 1.6, and a larger engine is more expensive to maintain, and it consumes more gasoline. All motors have weak plastic and rubber of the cooling system. Expansion tanks are consumables. It is worth revising every few years. The clamps are not very successful, the holes tend to swell and break at the, at the joints. Volvo Turbo engines at focuses do not differ in resources, and this is understandable. They are bought not for driving to church, but for such a series on Neely. Yes, and they tune thoroughly, projects for 350-600 forces are counterfeit regularly. Projects for 350-600 forces are counterfeit regularly. Unfortunately, there were many unique units here, such as an exhaust manifold with an integrated hot part of the turbine. All this raises the cost of maintenance, since mass components from Velvo are not suitable or requires a serious collective farm with the replacement of several units at once. On this information, both the problems of port focus is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.